everybody. Welcome to the Metrex Navy Fitness Challenge. We are here on the USS Harry S. Truman Aircraft Carrier, and I am Craig Ummer along with Bill Kazmaier, three-time World's Strongest Man champion. We've also got two very distinguished guests. The first, the commanding officer of the USS Harry S. Truman, Captain Mike Gruthausen. Nice to, nice to have you here, sir. Thanks for being here. Great to have you, Craig. All right, well, thank you for your permission. And finally, the XO, Ted Carter. Greetings. Thanks. All right, well, this first question goes to you, Captain. Whenever people think about the Navy, they think about teamwork. I think it's paramount in what you do. Well, I'd like to think that the absolute epitome of teamwork is demonstrated daily by the more than 5,000 young men and women who make this great national asset uh, operate every single day. But quite frankly, I also have to tell you, anywhere you go in the world and witness our Army, Navy, Air Force, or Marine personnel, you'll get a true lesson in teamwork. XO, the other thing that I think people think about when they think about the U.S. military, and certainly the U.S. Navy, is the physical preparedness you need to have. Well, Craig, this isn't just four and a half acres of U.S. sovereign territory. The true lifeblood of this ship is the 5,500 men and women on this ship. And their fitness level is really the true strength of this ship. Well, my co-host, Bill Kazmaier, knows all about fitness. And, Bill, they are going to need them both, physical fitness and teamwork, to get through this first event, the plane pull. And a lot of strength. With an F-14 of 52,000 pounds, these five sailors, three men and two women, are going to have to get down and stay low to pull this over the course. That's our first event. We've got a few more also. We've got the sea bag working party, the stairwell climb, the tug of war, and finally the fuel, hose, and reel. Those events all coming up, but it looks like they're getting ready for the first one. Let's head over there. Kaz, what we like to call the reality element of this day-to-day -day on the carry, you see these planes don't have a reverse, so they have to be pushed at times and even pulled into position. There can be close to 70 planes on a flight deck at any given time, so they really earn their money when they have to get these into position. Let's meet the Aqua Team. Lieutenant Garner Sutton, the captain, followed by aviation machinist Alvin Smith, hull maintenance tech Shannon McDonough, cryptologic tech Karen Boyle, and finally rounding out the team, aviation ordnance man Jessica Cook. Lined up right now, Kaz getting set to go. Momentum is the key, isn't it, to start? It is. The outside athletes pulling a chain and trying to keep their body low to use their hips and legs. They've got to pull over 100 feet. That is the finish line they are after when the front wheel housing of the F-14 crosses that line. That will be the finish. Fastest time, of course, will win. But at this point, they've got to stay really low. There you see Shannon McDonough. He's pretty high up, isn't he, Cass? Yeah, he's tall, though. He's got a lot of leverage. Best pulling position is going to be face forward, pumping the arms. When you pull backwards, you just can't put the power to it. Well, they need to keep that momentum going forward, and Shannon McDonough right there doing a good job. A little high up, and oh, that's Karen Boyle losing her footing, actually going down. That's going to cost them valuable seconds, Cad. Right back up, pulling with the rest of the team. It's all about getting over that finish line. 100 feet's a long ways to pull this plane. There's the horn. They have crossed the line. 49.13 seconds. They're our first team out of the blocks. Here's the red team, captained by Lieutenant Junior Grade Kathleen Baldwin, followed by Air Crew Survival Equipment Man Ed Devaney, also on the team Aviation Machinist Mate Darren Schnedler, Air Traffic Controller Tanisha Latabadir, and finally Air Traffic Controller Troy Sanford. They are set right now. Again, Kaz, using that chain, the two guys on the end, they have to use that upper body strength as well at the beginning. Craig, that chain is such a big advantage. If they like to use it, they'll get a much better pull by getting started with the chain. Well, they've done a great job so far, it looks like, of staying low. The guys on the end set the precedent early on, and this whole team has been on all fours the whole way. Experience, Craig, staying low really hurts. These athletes are taking the yeah. same and thing fast. Well, Captain no. Captain Baldwin, no strange to pain. She won a bronze medal at the World Military Games for a triathlon, one of the most painful events you can do. So she has got her team pumped up, and they are moving this Tomcat. Kaz, I like the technique. They are staying really low this whole way. We'll see if the time translates, though. Just working together. Teamwork. That's what it's all about the Navy. Very close to that line, and they have crossed it. But, oh, you can see the exhaustion. 59 seconds even. They sit in second place. Let's meet the Greed team, captained by machinery repairman Burton Benson. The rest of the team is electronic warfare petty officer Nicole Balderrama, aviation boatswain handler Sarah Harrison, electrician's mate Dennis Holloway, and finally, engineerman third class Joshua Stevenson. 
That was our start signal, and again, the use of change by those outer guys, Kaz, oh so important at this point. The great team, nobody wants to get low. They're all starting high. It's a big mistake it's going to cost them here at the beginning. This is the team with a lot of muscle, though, Kaz, and here they have decided to work in unison. Look at that. We haven't seen this before, the hook technique. They're helping each other with balance, eh? being able to put their hip and back straight into this pull. I think it's really a great technique. You can tell the difference from the previous team. Gray moving it so much better than the red team. Again, on all fours, a few of our competitors doing that. They're finally getting that momentum going, still trying to drive forward, though. Look at the commitment by these athletes. They veered a little bit off course, Kaz. We'll see if that cost them some time. There is their time, 49 seconds. They move into first place. Let's go to our reporter, Kerry Matson. Hey, How tough was that? TV. Was that as tough as you thought it was? It was tough. Be? It was tough. Yeah. All right. It was really tough. Get on your feet if you can so we can talk to the rest of your team. How do you feel about what you did? Let's go, Nate. How helpful was the Maroon team for you before you got started? They were good. It helped us out. It gave us the little tips and little pointers that kept us moving. All right. Very encouraging. Feeling all right? Great. All right. First event. First event's off to a great start. Thanks, Kerry. Well, they mentioned the Maroon team. That was one of the teams in our trials that did not qualify for the finals. Right now, let's take a look at our last team in the finals, the Green team, captained by Jamison Lambeth. Also on the team, aviation machinist mate Teresa Parisi, followed by aviation machinist mate Greg Spickle. Also, aviation structure mechanic Aaron Needham, and finally, Kristen Bauman. Okay, let's check out this start. Using the chains to stay in low. Ooh, I like this time. They're moving. They're moving fast. Well, Green has had the advantage of looking at all these other teams. We heard Kerry talk about how there's been some sharing of information. Everyone does highlight how this is one Navy. They all, at the end of the day, are back to being one team. And here we see some fast-moving action, Kaz. Okay, they pulled low to a point where the plane was moving fast. Now they're up and running. This, I think, has been the best team so far as far as getting that momentum going. And they have kept it going, Kaz. Look at this. They are moving. They're headed for the win, aren't they? They really want to go. This green team has by far had the best cadence, and look at that, 39 seconds. They crushed the best time by 10 seconds. They move in to first position overall, and they have set the standard so far in our first event here on the USS Harry S. Truman. Very happy members of this green team. Let's take a look at the standings overall. Green sits in first, followed by the gray team, the aqua team in third, and the red team sits in fourth. Guys, you got to keep in mind at this point, the F-14 that we're taking a look at is the heart and soul of the USS Navy. It is the mainstay of the Naval Air Force pilots, and that first event just showed us how solid they have to be. Coming up next, it's the Sea Bag Work Party, where they take 50-pound bags and move them from the mess deck to the hangar bay. That's when Kaz and I return. I no longer compete at a high level in strength competition, but I still want a high energy level, and I want to be very fit and metrics was the key for me. I found that it had all the protein I needed. I've got plenty of energy in my workouts. It helps me with lean muscle mass. Welcome back to the Metric the Navy Fitness Challenge. Craig Hummer along with Bill Kazmaier and Kaz. The next event, the Sea Bag Working Party, is very unique. They're going against the clock and for very valuable points. And they're moving these bags off the mess hall deck where they feed 20,000 meals a day through the hatch, up the ladder, down the passageway, around this corner. They're going to load these bags right here, all for time, as fast as they can. If you were on board, it would be about 25,000 meals a day just for you. But seriously, though, these supply lines are the lifeblood of the carrier. This is how they get everything on and off the ship. They can be as short as a few people to as long as a few hundred. They need it every single day here. Let's go to the action. Before we go to the event, let's meet some of our teams that were eliminated in the preliminary, starting with Vegas Gold, captained by Deirdre Rulli, and also Douglas Bowles, Michael Aruo, Gail Forrester, and Benjamin Smetana. We move to the host team from the Harry S. Truman, also eliminated in the preliminaries, captained by Donnie Townsend, made up of Harold Carroll, Gary Bell, Alicia Hill, and finally Heather Barkas. Next up is the black team, Justin Piling, the captain, Sarah Coswell, Tony King, Andrea Baxter, and Joe Brown are his teammates. The Maroon Squad, Anthony Bull, their captain. Also on the squad, Leslie Walker, John Frazier, Rochelle Roman, and Roy McBride. Next up is James Holman Jr.'s team, Navy Blue. He is their team captain, followed by Clarissa Pritchard, Tony Mirando, Sean Fife, and Dale Savalaggio. 
And finally, the gold squad, captained by Christopher Landis, Ralph Glenn, Suzanne Waters, Ann Powell, and Sean Hester are his teammates. Kaz, there you see the reality element of it. That sea bag on the back of that sailor, that is how you get up to 100 pounds of each bag on and off the ship, whether it's peacetime or wartime, it is all the same to these sailors. Back inside the Harry S. Truman, that is the munitions elevator opening up. We are on the mess deck. That munitions elevator runs the whole height of the ship from where the weapons are stored well below deck all the way up to the flight deck. That is Jessica Cook handing off to Shannon McDonough. They are the first part of the team, but it's all about all five members helping out, isn't it, Cass? It is, Craig. They've got to be evenly spaced through this course. Lieutenant Sutton's at the top. He's putting the bags as close to the yellow line as he can. Sutton's the only officer on the squad. He actually went through the enlisted ranks, then went to officer candidate school and moved up. Right now, Jessica Cook, great job grabbing those bags, but as you mentioned earlier, you've got to get them across that line, so this strategy is somewhat interesting. Sutton has yet to go out and pull any of those bags over. Greg, I think they're bunching up at the top. I know that Sutton's really banking on his athletic ability to move all those bags around the corner and over the yellow line. You see all the bags that he's been able to get over the top, but he's got to get them around that corner, as you said. McDonough still putting them up the ladder. But at this point, he's got to start translating it to getting him over there. He's finally done it, throwing as much as he can. But I think the strategy might have backfired, Kaz. And look at that. The judges give him four total bags. I mean, again, they're the first team to go. We'll see if that works out for him. Kaz, keep in mind, they only have 60 seconds to do this whole event. So as we've said time and time again, strategy will be key. Red team ready to go. That's Troy Sanford waiting for the munitions door to open up and the signal to happen. He will be handing off to Ed Devaney. Critical stages right here at the bottom, aren't they, Cass? Ed, Ed's taking on a really tough job running up the stairs with that 50-pound sea bag. Kathleen grabs it and then hands off to Tanisha. And then finally, Darren Snedler has the finished position in his first bag very quickly already across the line. That's a nice strategy. Each one of the sailors is taking a real tough part of the job, moving at equal distances. Can't say enough about this Navy teamwork. This is what it is all about. Their lives depend on it day in and day out. And Darren Snedler, a great job. He's got those fresh legs at this point. The Cavs, I got to think those are going to start to tire, aren't they? I sure hope he doesn't hit the wall. He's moving really fast. 50-pound bags, though, able to sort of leap through that hatch with really no problem, at least no perceivable problem at this point. A great job by Snedler so far. Still pumping those pistons, so to speak. And he has got a number of those bags over. We'll wait for the final count. Tanisha hands off yet another bag. Time winding down. Is he going to get it over? And yes, he does. Kaz, the judges have awarded him seven bags and his teammates a great job overall. Craig, what a difference between Schnedler and Sutton from the Aqua team for the last man moving bags. Let's send it over to Kerry. Tell me again, what was going on down? Who was, who was dragging the bags out of the elevator? I was taking it down and handing it to him. On the first one, we handed it to him, then I just started throwing him in. On the last one, the eighth one, we just picked it up and went with it. And unfortunately, the clock kind of wound down before you could get number eight, but seven's really been the important number. Were you happy with that? Yeah, we're happy with anything. We're in last place, so uh, can't go downhill from here. Right, well, you're still in it. You're still in it. It's not over yet. Thanks a lot. Good job. Thank you, Kerry. Our next team is going to be the gray team, captained by Burton Benson. He'll be at the top of the stairs. The person grabbing the bag, Sarah Harrison. She's got the first leg, and then they're going to the tag team of Holloway and Stevenson. They make up the mid-range, and that is Benson, your captain, right there. Top, it looks like Nicole taking it around the corner and over the line. So they have learned early on that they need to get those bags right away. There you see Sarah Harrison again. She's doing a great job with that drag technique, Kaz. He is just flipping it into the hallway. Holloway and Stevenson, though, they've got the tough part. They get it to the ladder through those two hatches, hand it off to Benson. There you see Benson right there, and he throws it as far as he can into Cole Balderrock. Throwing a 50-pound sea bag, dragging it, moving it any way you can. You saw Nicole Balderrama there making sure those bags were over the line. The judges are very technical about that. It has to be done. You still see Holloway and Stevenson doing a great job on their handoff. Benson takes it as far as he can go. Nicole having to finish it off. Time ticking down. Let's see if they can get these, and we'll see if the judges give them credit. They get a total of seven bags credited there. In 51 seconds was when that seventh bag got across, so number eight did not count, Kaz. 
Taking another look, Benson gets that 50-pound shot put handed to him, and he just throws it as hard as he can to Nicole Balderrama. And that is Kristen Bauman from the green team waiting on the mess deck for that munitions elevator door to open up. They are our last team here in the final. She will hand off to Captain Jamison Lambeth, who has that tough task of chucking that 50-pound bag up the stairs, Kaz. Well, this is all about teamwork. They're moving really quick. One of the toughest jobs by Greg Spickle there, moving the bag the greatest distance of any of the sailors. He throws it off to Teresa Parisi. She will be the person in charge of finesse, placing those bags across the line. There's nothing easy about any of this job. There you see Spickle coming in, and you're right. He's, he's covered a lot of real estate, Kaz. He's still able to throw those 50-pound bags very well. I like the way Teresa's working. Smarter, not harder, dragging the bag. Teresa, the only female in the rest of your swimmer command, so she's in shape without a doubt. There you see J Lambeth. And I tell you what, we're not really seeing him, but Aaron Needham, a tough tax, he's just sitting on the stairs, transferring. And there you have it. My gosh, Teresa Parisi, another great job. They are going to come close to the seven-bag limit, if not beat it. Going for the line. Look at that. The judges have given them seven bags. So unfortunately for Teresa Parisi and her teammates, that last bag does not count. Another look at Greg Spickle as he covers a lot of real estate and chucks those 50 pounds as best he can. Let's take a look at the team standings in that event. A three-way tie by number of bags, but we go to the count back on time. That gives the gray team the win. And as we look at the overall placings after two events, gray and green stand in first, aqua and red in a tie for third. Coming up next, an event that combines speed, agility, and if you don't notice that helmet, a bit of danger. It's the ladder climb. Captain, officer of the deck, and the navigator to pen and us qualified helmsmen to maintain course and speed throughout normal working hours. The special during special evolution such as slide ops and underway replenishment. We maintain our course and speed due to weather changes, course changes, and wind changes throughout the day. We enjoy driving our 97,000 ton aircraft carrier throughout the day. Welcome back to the Metrex Navy Fitness Challenge. Hi, everybody. I'm Craig Hummer, along with Bill Kazmaier. And Kaz, I know you like this next event. It is definitely no walk in the park. It's the Ladder Well Climb Relay. Craig, this event's just like all the others. It requires Navy core values of honor, courage, and commitment. And those aren't just words for these guys and gals. It's a lifestyle. They come in here in the best shape of their lives. They're going to go through that blue door, the captain's hatch, of four flights of ladders to the Admiral's Bridge just as fast as they can to ring that bell and get the rest of their teammates up. Well, they are going to need all their speed as well as their finesse. It's interesting to note that there are almost 1,000 ladders here on the carrier, so plenty of places to practice. Let's see how they do. The reality element of this CAS is that this is how they go up and down the decks all day long. Talk about being in shape. The sailor's best friend probably is one of these ladders because if they need to get somewhere quickly, they better know their way around the ship. Our aqua team is first, and that is Alvin Smith first to hit those four flights. He's doubling up and moving really quick. He's quite an athlete. He's got tremendous upper body strength, and he's utilizing that arm power to pull himself up those stairs. He played high school track and basketball right now, showing some speed and some agility. He will ring that bell. Next up is Jessica Cook. Each of these competitors should look to take around 20 seconds on average. Jessica, a little stumble there, Kaz. Again, you just almost can't even look down. You have to do this off muscle memory, don't you? That's it. I spent a day on this ship, and I went over 100 different ladders. It's really a tough activity. These sailors do it every day of their lives. It's Karen Boyle who hits the ladders next. Technique will be important as well. How they use that upper body strength that you mentioned, Alvin, you did so well on their first leg. A little bit of a difficulty there, a little fatigue perhaps showing through. Following Karen is going to be the captain, Garner Sutton. Oh, and that slip right there. Costly indeed, Kaz. All this for time, remember. He's trying to go just as fast as he can. He's a little bit wild. He's pumped up, though. The man is going after it. There again, another little stumble. 
Garner rings the bell, and that is the cue for Shannon to hit it. Shannon McDonough. Another high school track star, so he's using some very good speed right now. You wouldn't think at this height, Kaz, that he'd be so agile. He's got tremendous foot speed. I like the way he plants on the stair before he turns. And that is it. The Aqua team has set the precedent. One minute, 43 seconds even. There you see the time, and a number of the members of the USS Harry S. Truman on hand to not only help out, but certainly cheer on this competition. Al oh, Garner goes down on that one. Our red team is next, headed off by the one and only Ed Devaney. Little footwork problem right there. Ed looking down just a little bit, sighting where his feet have to go at the beginning of the stairwell, but then just going off of his best memory as possible. He rings the bell. That is followed by Tanisha Latimadir is our second competitor for the red team. Anytime you're trying to go as fast as you can, you're surely going to make some mistakes. Every mistake costs a little bit of time. Tanisha, a little slip there of her hands. But all in all, a very good job. They've been very good as far as the direction. No real confusion. There you see Troy Sanford, another tall competitor. You see them all wearing helmets, of course, for safety reasons as they go through those hatches and up the ladder. He's making the ladder in four steps. He's really moving. Those ladders are comprised of 12 steps total. Once the bell is rung, Team Captain Kathleen Baldwin hits the ladders. And this is a not good to see if you're the red team right here, ever so cautious. Kathleen, as I mentioned earlier in the show, a member of the triathlon team. Not sure at this point, she might have injured herself, gingerly going up those ladders. And she rings the bell. And your final competitor heads on up. That is Darren Schnedler. He's their anchor man, looking for some speed. He's really quick, isn't he? He's quite an athlete here. Schnedler was a New Mexico State wrestling champion, so he has transferred that ability to some speed here. Their final time, 145.00, putting them in second position. Take another look at Troy Sanford, ran cross country as well as played soccer and volleyball. He's an air traffic controller in the Navy. He's showing some great control there, heading up that ladder. Next up, our gray team. It is Dennis Holloway, the first to go through the hat. Dennis over 200 pounds. It's a lot of beef moving up those ladders. Dennis, known for his bench pressing, he listed in his bio cast 405 pounds his best. Is that better than you? It's double body weight. That's an <laughs> awesome bench. Doing pretty well at this point, but uh oh, look at this confusion. Oh, this is just valuable ticks off the clock right there. Still confused. You go to the bell. That's what he's got to do. He is followed by Nicole Balderrama. Her father was a runner, grandfather also in the Navy, so she's probably been around a ship or two in her youth. She's got really nice foot speed, doesn't she, Craig? At this point, the gray team needs to make up for some of that confusion at the top. She comes in straight to it. She knows her way around the ship, that's for sure. Up next is Team Captain Burton Benson. Another one of our power guys, 215 pounds. Using that upper body strength, as you have mentioned before, able to almost pull himself up as well. Good foot speed. He's almost hitting every one of those 12 steps on each ladder. Coming up right now, and he heads straight for that bell as well. I'm so impressed with these sailors. They're in tremendous condition. Sarah Harrison's turn. Making her way up these four ladders, and she's committed. Look at that focus right now. Checks the first step or two on her way up. You know fatigue sets in right around the fourth set of ladders. Oh, Cass, speaking of fatigue, look at this. Another element of confusion for the gray team. They've lost a number of seconds this way, but our final competitor, Joshua Stevenson. It seems that fatigue produces disorientation after the fourth ladder. Well, these are, this is a beefy team, Cass. A lot of weight being thrown around on this gray team, so 
They're having to go up those four ladders in record time, and we'll see what they can do. Their final time, certainly not a record, 2.04. That puts them in third position of the three teams that have gone. And it all came down to these confusing elements, Kaz. They lost valuable seconds on the clock, and that puts them in third. Right now, straight up, it's Aaron Needham for the green team. They've got to beat a time of 143.00 if they hope to win this event. He's got a lot of leg power, doesn't he? He's moving up quick. A little slip right there. Overall should not really cost him if he can stay, keep that focus, and he has all the way up. That bell signifies it's time for Teresa Parisi to hit the ladders. Teresa is quite an athlete. She's moving hard and fast. Parisi, one of the smaller competitors, is only 5'2". She practices Taekwondo. She's actually the only female in the rescue swimmer command, so she's fit, no doubt about that. As the bell sounds, it's Greg Spickle's turn. We saw he's got the upper body strength, didn't we, Kaz, in that sea bag toss? He sure did. He's got the attitude, too. Look at that face when he comes up these stairs. Great use of the rails right there, using his momentum to swing him around, and he'll get to that bell. Team captain Jamison Lembeth is next on the ladder. At 235 pounds, he's one of our biggest competitors. He's still really quick. Well, he played football, baseball, weightlifting, as well as softball. So this guy has used his weight a lot. Very athletic. See him right now able to come up that last ladder. And we're down to the anchor leg. It's time for Kristen Bauman to take her crack at these stairs. 5'8 and 160 pounds. She moves very swiftly. Remember, they're trying to beat 143-0-0, and they have been close the whole way. It's going to come down to the finish. What is it going to be? They're cheering her on. Oh, it's just ever so close. Green Team does not get it, though. They finish at 144-0-0. Let's send it up to Kerry, where the air is a bit thinner. The first team that came up did it in 204. 204, and you guys got 144. That was... Uh...